The next function, and that's for me one of the how, how to say biggest benefits in our new uh, option here. It's the so-called um, the uh, size strategy editor here. You see the variable strategy editor and the variable strategy assignment, and that's a really nice function. Let me show you in the first step what you can for what you can use the variable strategy assignment. Yeah, and for this I will load another CNC run or another inspection plan, sorry. And yeah, what is the benefit behind? In Calypso 2020, we offer you different kind of strategies which are very close to our cookbook our size measuring strategy cookbook especially for circles cylinders and uh, some kind of planes yeah uh, we offer you the strategy only the measuring strategies in the first case um, for these things and maybe in in the next calypso um, revisions there will be more inside maybe then also uh, in the direction of the uh, evaluation and so on but in the first step uh, really the measuring strategies and it's, it will save you uh, so much time for in programming especially if you have really uh, a huge number of elements at the end and you always want to for example use the cookbook strategies for this i program here a small inspection plan yeah with you see some holes and so on inside yeah here are three planes for the base alignment, some circles, cylinders, and so on, and also some lines. And now the I can show you inside if I go into the cylinder, uh, sorry, it's a circle here in this case, the strategy now is a uh, speed of 10 millimeter and 425 um, points will be used. Or oh, let's look into a cylinder. Yeah, you see there, here are two circular lines inside the strategy, two paths. Yeah, and I think also in the next one, yeah, also two paths are included. And now I can use here the variable strategy assignment. And if I open, the following strategy catalogs already exist and you will have the blue one when you uh, install Calypso 2020. We will offer you um, the size active ZF. That means it's the size measuring strategy cookbook uh, recipe for an active sensor like our vast head. And it's the ingredients for the functional check. Yeah. This is also for an active sensor, and these are the ingredients for a passive sensor. Uh, uh, sorry, for the process control. Then we have two of them for passive sensors, like our XXT, also for functional check and process check. And we have two uh, quite new um, things, which very close to coming up the new size version. Uh, was integrated two thing uh, uh, strategies for our navigator um, option, also for functionality and process control. The black one you see here on the top that are made of mine, yeah. So it's not included in, in your Calypso, but I will show you later how we can define our own strategy which we want to use later. In the first step, I want to first to explain you, for example, let us take the active uh, uh, for the function check, yeah, active sensor, functionality check, and OK. Now a new window will pop up for the variable strategy assignment. And you can see here what is be used for each element. For example, the fir uh, first three one, uh, are planes with different lengths and this has a length between 25 and 80 and there will be a special strategy for this 
from 80 to 250 there is another you will see later what what's inside and also for the circle there's a smaller diameter range a bigger diameter range and so on and then we will have different kind of settings for the strategy for example if you don't want to use for one of those elements uh, for these elements um, you don't want to use the strategy you can also deselect it and then the original um, strategy which you programmed inside yeah still exists then if you select it here then you can say here at the end i want to override an existing strategy for all of them or i want to create a new one and the standard is here the name which i selected before in the list and i can change if i want the name here but why yeah <laughs> if you can do it you can write here inside uh, santa claus or something like this but i think it makes no sense because at the end maybe you cannot really um, uh, subdivide it and know which strategy already used in this element so i will normally use the the names which i defined before for the whole uh, pass of the strategy for example so if i say create a new strategy and say assign need some seconds and if you have a really huge program maybe it needs one or two minutes yeah but if you have to change everything manually i think you will need hours <laughs> for this yeah so and if i go now inside a feature let's go for example maybe you remember the cylinder with the diameter 15 before there were two passes inside now i have three passes inside with a cookbook strategy was made with five millimeter per uh, speed um, and the number of points 425 and so on and three sections where we measure this for example and also here for the planes we have different kind of settings here that was the smaller one we have here different kind of uh, poly lines inside with 10 millimeter and step width of 0.1 and if we look to another plane we have here now a step width of 0 0.31 you see the step width is different because this plane is a little bit greater yeah and software is only searching for the so how to say the area of the distance which i defined before it was i'm not remember exactly between 25 and 80 and between 80 and 250 in this case okay coordinate system yes that's the correct one yeah uh, i think also a nice function is if you are have a huge number of elements huge number of maybe of alignments you use and so on since sometimes it's really hard if you want to select one in an element to find it yeah if you have hundreds of elements it's not so easy okay for something we can use a filter yeah, that please show me only cylinders or only show me uh, uh, planes and so on but sometimes uh, at the end i have hundred again yeah so and for this and this is what i tried to show you i created here an inspection plan with a lot of you see alignments in this case yeah um, and i want to use now for example this alignment here in a distance then i can directly go in here and start to to write the name if i know it yeah that's the important thing i have i need some informations for example I'm not remember if I write KS or CS for coordinate system or AL aligned. Ah, I'm not remember, but I remember the number, maybe. Yeah. For example, it started with one, two. Ah, here are all the coordinate systems. In my case, sorry, I, I program it in German. Then the name is coordinate system, not alignment. Yeah. Um, and maybe i want one two uh three yeah and now you see here alignment one two three is there or i want to start with ks ah it's only one ks here with a pattern and so on 
it's a comfortable searching function now you also can use this here for example in the position yeah and here under the settings for the reference you can also here use the search for alignment function now it's also really nice and you see if there you have a lot of uh, you need a lot of time for find the correct one if you know the name only start again one two three and directly i will find it uh, now it's possible to use more than one datum for run out for single run out radial or axial and for cumulative or a total run out um I told you in the first session that we can use this now in Calypso and now it's also possible to take this information out of the CAD model of the PMI information and you see it here it's uh, defined in German it's Rundlauf means run out yeah uh, X uh, sorry radial run out and we have here a total uh, radial run out with two um, datums here the B and the A. The B in this case is a plane and A, the datum A, is the axis of the cylinder A. And if I create now a measurement plan, uh, one moment I create it, then you will see I will have the cylinder here for the run out, which I have to check. I have a plane but no strategy behind. I have to create the strategy by myself and I have here also a cylinder, uh, which is the second datum, and all the uh, all the things are here in the total run out, the feature and the both uh, the the date. Let me first explain a small example, uh, where you can see it a little bit. In this case, I measured a plane on the left, a plane on the right, and create again the special symmetry plane with this. Yeah, where I do a feature point, a uh, recall of the feature point of these two planes into a symmetry plane here. And this symmetry plane now I can use at size standards and I think this is where it has to be. Yeah, um, In the standard calculations, we had the two point diameter and now we have the two point distance as well if you have uh, no other informations on your drawing you know if you if your drawing follows the rule of the gps system maybe it's enough to name one of the gps standards in the drawing and then the whole gps system has to be used and one of these standards of the gps system is the iso 14405 and in this the standard for dimensions and a dimension is also between two opposite planes, yeah, um, is the two point distance. And this is what we can use now in Calypso for the planes. And then we get here also, like you uh, remember, maybe from the uh, two point diameter, we get a minimum and a maximum value of opposite points, yeah. Um, in my case, it, it's, but I want to show it to you, it's not really a good way to measure this yeah? because you see the points are not completely on the opposite side yeah here in this area i only have on this plane points but uh no not really on the opposite side uh, points so in this case only it can be calculated in a good way here on the bottom of the elements and here on the left side because the rest of them i will not have uh, um, opposite points. So I have here the min and the max point. I can also cr create here the envelope condition yeah, for this element. It's also nice. What is the envelope uh, uh, condition on planes? I have in this case two minimum circumscribed planes which have to be parallel yeah, and move them together as long that the smallest distance um, is possible this is one of the values yeah and also that means is here the maximum and the minimum local two-point distance and both of them have to be inside tolerance yeah if i use two point the local point distance 
then I really have two times opposite points, which I check the smallest and the longest deviation, the minimum and the maximum deviation have to be inside tolerance. And let me show you in a maybe another example where it's a little bit easier maybe to, to understand. I created an inspection plan or a colleague of mine created an inspection plan where I can have uh, in the first step here a diameter. You see that's the standard oops, the two-point diameter which I can show you here. And in the two-point diameter, I have here the min and the maximum value. You know it goes always through the Gauss uh, center point of the circle calculation yeah, to the opposite side from this point, for example, to here. And if here is not exactly a point, there will be done an interpolation between the neighbor points yeah, to create the dimension in this case. Yeah. Um, and if I have, for example, here a sinus uh um form deviation a sinus uh yeah the or the sorry the form deviation has a sinus uh, contour then it's really easy to see here now the two point uh dimension we have here the maximum and here is the minimum and if i use the envelope condition then i this is the envelope in this case inside the maximum inscribed diameter and the maximum two-point distance and both of them again have to be inside the tolerance that's the envelope condition but the standard is the local point in the iso yeah in the asme it's complete opposite and now we have the two-point distance here and i can also show that's a let me say um not equal distributed points which i have a standard measurement and then this is the two-point uh um uh, sorry, this is the two-point calculation, the minimum and the maximum. Yeah, you can see here. And we also can here use the envelope condition. And then you see here the two planes. Yeah, in this case, the maximum inscribed planes, they have to be parallel. Yeah, and they have to be the distance between the maximum inscribed parallel planes have to be inside tolerance and the local maximum two-point dimension yeah both of them and here the same that maybe it's you can see it a little bit easier plus set with a sinus form contour yeah then we have here the maximum and here the minimum and if i say the envelope condition then you see again the two planes which in this time uh, case there are the maximum inscribed parallel planes and here the maximum two-point dimension